rise. Men with the counsel of God must rise. Men with the power of the highest must rise. I want you to begin to talk to God quietly, 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 quietly. I will raise judges. I will raise judges. I will raise judges. Judges like it were, like they were in the beginning. Judges, men that can command and move the hand of God. Shabalom barane masika bregazi alabala. Inkomba seka bose zema hile, kusanengo bosoko borode. Ekamina santela sobre makatabura makasaila. Enso minakadia ika kopote melekade. I want to be great in the sight of God. Faceless and nameless people will arise from among us. Men in whom the Lord will invest His strength, His power, His glory. So that order can be brought into the land again. You are that man He is waiting for. You are that woman. He wants to use your voice to quicken the dead. He wants to use your prayers to open the heavens. He wants to use your lamentation to bring healing to the patched land. I will raise judges as the fence. Men that can use the weapons of the star. They move the constellations that can speak to the alignment of the orbit. Make the moon stand still so that the purposes of God can prosper. Men mighty, men strong, valiant men that have the power to move the hand of God. Raise from among us judges, people that understand the meaning of the alignment of the constellations. Men that can draw power from the great deep and command the windows of heaven to be open. Kova vala maskita bala. Brase kopeta minele. Rombe kasila. Maraske tobinada. Rakepande samando kope. Rehiske padia. Rekapata mina skombra. Ande zahaila. Ika mama mama. Your journey in God does not end here. Satan is not in control. God is in control. There is a new page that is opening up. A page of power. A page of glory. For God has spoken his word over your life. And nothing can thwart it. The devil's will will not come to pass. God will take you in his hands and he will pedestal you. He will proclaim upon you gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning. It shall flee away. We call upon the name of the Lord. We invoke the power of God to descend upon his people. That out of among us the great will rise. The strong will arise. The wise will arise. Oh God, we call upon you. We call upon you. Amera kula bakata. Oh, oh, oh. within you. There is power locked into your spirit. There is power that your eyes of understanding must be open to see the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the mighty 
working of his power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We want to know this power. We want to know this glory. We want to know, oh God, this height of glory. Seni ke bala mosa ke mala. Impote zenele. Bebres kaborali makila. Miresa koria basa kamanda. Strengthen my feeble mind. Strengthen my feeble spirit. Strengthen me from your inside. Grant unto me the grace to run with your spirit. A righteous heart and a consistent spirit that in every weather under every circumstance, in every situation, I will mount up with wings. I will mount up with wings like the eagles. I will mount up. I will mount up. I will mount up. I will mount up. I will walk and not be weary. Sikabala mama mama mama. Embrace kogene rupeke rupeke semana. Oh yes. Nobody can end your story. No witch can end your story. No native doctor can end your story. Never, they never started it. So they, they can never bring an end to it. God is the one that originated you. He said, Before I formed in the belly, I knew you. Before thou came as forth, I sanctified you. I ordained you. As a prophet to the nations, nothing can hinder that plan from coming to pass. God has breath, His holy breath upon your life. He said, You will not be among the small, you will not be among the miniature. His grace will lift you up. No man can put you down, His name will lift you up. Nothing can cast you on the ground. We call upon Him tonight, we call upon Him tonight. The strong, the mighty, the excellent, the powerful. Look upon us with mercy and bless us.
Take the hand of your neighbor close to you and begin to pray for that life right now. Release the grace of God. Press the anointing of God into those hands. Press the power of God into those hands. Tell that sister, tell that brother, though you be may seem that you fight alone, you will fight with the strength of men. For the hand of the Lord shall come upon you. His mighty power shall overwhelm you. And when the devil say your journey has ended, God will cause you to rise again. He proclaims your name from his holy mountain of Zion. He say that the devil is not in control. I am in control of your life. that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. <laughs> Among them shall come the noise of thanksgiving and the noise of them that make merry. I shall multiply you, and you shall not be small. I shall glorify you, and you shall not be few. For from among you, from among your family, from among your people shall come the noise of thanksgiving and the noise of them that make merry. I will multiply you. Press some anointing into those hands. Press the power of God into those hands. Press the name of the Lord Jesus into those hands. Say you cannot fail because God cannot fail. You cannot be down because God cannot be down. You cannot be defeated because God cannot be defeated. Mamma, 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 mamma. Rekasanda, 
I want us to be silent for a minute. For he will rend the heavens and come down. No, I didn't say you. That thou wouldest rend the heavens. That thou wouldest come down. That the mountains might flow down at your presence. Come down. Let all the mountains in the lives of men flow out. Let the hills be burnt off. For as we speak, the hand of the Lord descends from the mountains. A highway shall be made for his people. Say the Lord. Many there be that will walk therein. For the path of righteousness shall be known by all in that day. Then shall the land spring forth the proper fruit. Righteousness shall look down from heaven. Her fortunes will be restored. And chief men shall yet be figured in her. For I will bring the later rain that has been withholding. 
and I will cause the land to yield and the sons thereof to be men of stature. We, your people, wait for the time of your return. Come to us. Let the enemies be put to shame. Let the princes that lurk in darkness be discomfited. Let their mountains fall. Let the power of the Emirates become consumed with fire. Bring to us peace. 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 We ask, O God, that even tonight, in these few minutes left, you will release unto us the angel of your presence to strengthen the heart of the weak. For it is written, Say unto him that is of a fearful heart, Thy God cometh. He will come and save you. And so we ask that the angel of your presence might descend amidst us. So the heart of him that is afraid might be strengthened. Let deep wells of conviction be dug within your sons and your daughters. Such as no circumstance can erode. And they will stand strong and wax mighty and valiant in the face of the tempest. You will make such men from among us that are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved but live and abide forever. Lord, even in this time, as you make, on, make us a nation, many children there be that have been born from among your people. Let a more excellent spirit than that which we have seen rest upon them. Let these little ones prophesy by your name. Do wonders. Dominate the earth by your spirit. Let there be no feeble in the land. For it is written that you brought them forth with silver and with gold. And there was none people among their tribe. So let it be written concerning us. That no people, no vanquished, no one that has, is heavily laden by the yoke of darkness will be numbered among us. But from among us he will raise the strong, the mighty. Keep us of cities, keep us of gates, men that understand the covenant, people that can mount gates to cut truces and covenants in the spirit, shape nations and lands and tribes by the wisdom of the sovereign God, raise judges from among us that can command by a rebuke, and the powers of the constellations are locked. Arise among us. And let your wonder begin in this land. Your wonder that is beyond the mind. Testimony to the manifest God among his people. For it is written, if you casted out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to man. Do wonders and signs amidst us. Let your great name be glorified. Amen. I went down into the garden of Knox to see the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourished and whether the pomegranates budded. However, I was aware my soul made me like the chariots of Aminadab. Return, return. O oh, Shulamite, return, return, that we might look upon thee. Oh, I didn't quote where I'm reading from. 
Turn your Bible, turn your Bible. You know, the Bible says that God will prepare a feast of fat things on that mountain unto all people. This is what it means for God to prepare a feast of fat things. The congregation of his people, by his spirit, his commandments are read to his people. His testimony stands as a foundation for all their civilization. Then something greater than what the sociologists can ever understand evolves. For it is written that righteousness exalts a nation. And sin is a reproach to all people. I see the fire of God's glory. And it shall not be long. It will descend amidst us. Puritans will rise again. People that are allergic to iniquity. And carriers of the grace of God. And can bring God into manifest reality. Because of their stature of the spirit. Puritans of God. Puritans of God. That's who we are. Puritans. Burning with the flame of righteousness. Constrained by the spirit of holiness. Puritans. Living witnesses and testimonies. To a generation facing severe crisis in the earth. Puritans. A foundation upon which God can stand. To mark the scales. And the measures of his judgment. Such men must evolve. Must rise again. Before God can appear as the rising sun that comes with healing in his wings. Puritans as testaments. And though the storms of darkness rage, the purpose of God will yet be accomplished. Holy men burning with fires. Fires holy, fires pure. Whose hearts are locked in the ways of righteousness. Whose souls have bowed down to the government of the Spirit of God. Men of valor in the Spirit. That have the stature and the discipline to stop the mounts of lions and to quench the violence of fire. Those days, they returned to us again. I saw it in the visions of my heart. And I saw that there were so many gates to be manned. And the soldiers conscripted were too few in their numbers. That at best, the land will still be porous. And when I worked in, in spirit, it brought courage, great courage, through the words of hope that is spoke by prophecy. That judges will arise. A judge is equivalent to a hundred men. <laughs> he may not multiply the numbers of faithful people. You just give them stature. For the Bible says that God has no restraint either to win with many or to conquer with few. He doesn't need to increase the number to turn the tide of the battle. He increases the men. Just like God doesn't need to increase your years, He increases your life. Hallelujah. You know, in church, when they say longevity, we say, Amen. Many years in the flesh will be the reputation of Methuselah's phenomena. I'm talking about men with capacity. Men that can fight with the strength of generations. With the mantles of the ancient and the wisdom long gone. Men that can sing songs long out long from the spirit realm. Take it from the lips of angels. And as those songs are sung, there's a crack in the foundation of the earth. Aha. And the secret things that are laid there are unveiled. Like the rod of Moses that revealed that there was a pathway in the midst of the Red Sea. That was not just an anointed man. It was a son in the image of the invincible that was manifest. And the powers of nature were subject to his rebuke. I speak of the judges. A judge can command the stars and they become weapons of war. Dripping down with fire in the camp of them that are disobedient to the way. <laughs> These are things I saw in my dreams. I saw them for three nights. It haunted me into the natural. 
And one of the nights when I woke up, there was an angel in the room that removed, it, it, it released dust, but it was red dust. Red dust came out of the feathers. Red dust. And as the red dust was passing through the room, I, I smelled the smell of rose flowers. Rose flowers. Rose flowers. There are powers beyond your walls. There are re realities beyond your thoughts. Hallelujah. Your strength is so feeble. At best, we are infamed. For the Bible says, it is the spirit that helpeth our families. But I speak of powers beyond men, beyond time, beyond manipulation. Something so strong that the rivers and the seas have to obey it. Something so wise that the roaring waves have to stand still in his presence. I speak of such powers. But the Lord has said that we return again. I'm, I'm talking of the day of wonders. Not just signs. I'm talking about what? Wonders. Wonders. There is something we need in this day. And just in case you came with the Bible, turn with me to the book of Psalms of Solomon. There were a few people that peeped into the dimensions of God of which I speak about. That description of that dimension. Sailed far beyond the limits of human worlds. Only the poets. The Psalms. The songs. Were able to put these things. In proper lyrical sequence. But yet. They were still mysterious at that. Hallelujah. A question is asked. In Psalms of Solomon chapter 6. The identity of a man was required. His name was not known among the sons of men. And because of the fiery nature of his appearance. His description alone could be captured in these words. Songs of Solomon chapter 6 verse 10. He said, Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. Now, I know you didn't see the sequence. The first is the money. Now, children, you are a sociologist. Can you describe the money? And the money. Who is a geographer? He said, who is? This one is like the money. What's that? Is it the illumination of the morning or the freshness? If you limit it to freshness, you have obscured the, the scope. How will you say somebody looks like the morning? Beauty. That's, that's, that's special. Or all you think about the morning is a look. That's what you see. What I see is that the morning is a womb. It's a womb, not a look. For the Bible says that thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. 
in the beauties of holiness. What's the next verse? In the womb of the money. Now, okay. I just wanted to help you because we wanted to limit our scope of things. The poets were the same ones that said that the morning was a womb, giving birth to stuff. I don't want to go deeper. But he said, Who is this? Like the morning. What's the next description? Fair as noon. Is it morning again? So it transcends the morning. And then this one is fair as noon. So the powers of the morning and noon are summed up in this reality. Clear as the sun. And then terrible as an army with banners. And notice this individual is addressed as a she. That's supposed to be the glory of the end time church. A womb that gives birth to purposes of divinity. You know the Bible says that the part of the just is like a shining light. That shineth more and more. Unto what? Where? What time is the perfect day? That's noon. And by noon, it is a prophetic word that is speaking about the time where the church will reach the height of her glory. By the morning, now talking about the move, the revival in the Acts of the Apostles, where the Holy Ghost just began to walk with men. So morning cannot be the same as noon. If there were the morning, then the noon is yet to come. That noon is you. Now, don't say, okay, maybe we need to we need to fast more. That's what will bring us there. No, it's not your effort. The hand of God will descend. Was it not the hand of God that came upon Elijah? And the Bible says he ran ahead of the chariots of Elam. That had nothing to do with him. Everything to do with God. Those days come again. Days of wonder. Where the might of God will be on public display and men will be forced to bow to his will. The souls of men will yet surrender to the might of his finger. For his glory will be seen among the sons of men. The Bible says it's like an army with banners. So how can you say she is like what? An army with what? During the time and the revival of the Acts of the Apostles, Even in the days of Jesus, Christians were known to be students. And that's why the word disciple is very common in the Bible. But the days of which the prophecy speaks are days where the best description of the Christian is not just a disciple. A soldier, a warrior. You know, the Bible says that when the devil shall come in like a flower, the Spirit of the Lord shall do, shall do what? Shall raise a standard. That word, standard, the same Hebrew word for banner. So it is an army with what? With standards. Now, we are a church today without standards. That's why we are not that angry. But the time will come. By the Spirit of God, the standards of the Lord will be raised again as banners. You will know who is 
a Christian and who is not because of what? The balance, the standards. Today, it's difficult for you to know who is a Christian. A bony man comes to church for first service. And then the blind pastor on the pulpit say, This week, the contract. His eyes cannot see the treachery that sits before him. So he blesses the unrighteous as he does the righteous. And it's difficult to know who serves Baal in the company. But an army comes, and the Bible calls it an army with standards. This is the army that can never be defeated, the army of the book of Joel. This was the vision that Solomon saw. An army with standards. Those days in Benway, especially the thief side, they know that if this person is chief in this generation, this family next, it's not given to contest. But in a day where there is no righteousness, they manipulate it. No standards. And in a time where there is no standards, the enemy has the advantage. He prowls like a hawk. He prowls like a raven. And he takes from our stock. Nobody can restrain him. Because the alignments are not balanced. And the foundations are out of course. The principles upon which life is based were not in keeping with their security. But a day comes when an impregnable force. That the best word to, decide, to, to describe the Christian is not disciple in that time. Soldier. He's blind to every other command. He can only hear the command of his commanding officer. In that day, <laughs> darkness will fade away like the darkness upon the morning as it submits to the first trance of light that shreds it. The recovery must begin from you and from me. The days of picnic Christianity are over. God seeks sons and daughters that can pay the price to be obedient. Because the last time you heard God clearly was the last time you obeyed Him. My words may not bring peace to you. But I speak from the belly of God. The words are the things I saw in heaven. And the days are upon us. The days indeed are upon us. Now we must ask him for grace and for strength. For strength will be required to rise in, ride hard into the desert where there is no covering. But ride in the name of your God. And great victories were wrought when one man summoned courage to stand against an entire platoon garrison. Bible says Shammah, the son of Age. He defended the field of Lentis and he smote the Philistines until his hand was cleaved to the sword. Hi. What kind of victory is that? Was that human power? He could not remove his hand from the sword again. They need bitter leaf with hot water to press the hand. To allow it to release its grip. And the Bible says the Lord wrought a great victory that day. Hallelujah. The Bible spoke. Come with me. Because our description in a short while will no longer be bread and butter, but militants, soldiers. Men that do not quake in the face of death. There's something bigger than death that has possessed them. 
Because this is the way we will face the gods, gods of the nations. And plant the banner of Christ amidst them. Not by picnic. Disloyal Christianity. Something that has eaten up your soul but in burning fat and sin to Jesus Christ. Finally, Second Samuel. Second Samuel. When the days come when God wants to identify his people as warriors, then a roll call must be made. A list of his warriors were kept from all generations. All generations. And that's why all of their weapons were preserved in a place called the Tower of David. That's where the, sword, the swords that conquered were kept. That's where all the shields that defended righteousness were kept. That's where all the anointings and mantles of the valiants were preserved in the Tower of David. Because warfare is something that reveals the might of God. And all his warriors are named in the chronicles of heaven. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse 8. A roll call is fashioned here. A roll call. Just like a roll will be made in our generation. This be the mighty men of our time. Just like Idahosa's name was chief among the princes of his day. There will be a roll that will have accommodation for you and me. But the, the point is, what will be written? What acts of valor will be captured concerning us? What might of war in securing glory for our king will be written by our name? Verse 8 said, This be the names of the mighty men whom David had. In this list, even the names of their fathers and their village was captured. The Tachnomite sat in the seat chief among the captives. The same was at Dino the S Knight. He lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. Now, we have different kinds of weapons in the armory. We have weapons that favor grip. Weapons that favor distance. Those are artillery weapons. Distance. All kinds of weapons. They matter. Weapons that favor weight. Hallelujah. So if you are valiant in your biceps, the matter will express your power much more. It can do an end to a sword and a spear. And when it drives and does damage to a human head, the possibilities of recovery are bleak. Matter. Some villains. Some villains like Tiberius. They don't go for sword. They go for weightier matters. Now, so this guy, if you know battle, despair is a weapon. It's an artillery weapon for distance. It means this guy was caught unawares. He was not ready for this war. Maybe he was in a restaurant eating. And then the enemies broke up on him. When he was falling, his hand touched his spear. Eh? And with that spear, he brought down how many men? Eight hundred. <laughs> I always wonder what will be written concerning me if the chronicles of the annals of the mighty are recorded in my time. How many feats? Of might will I have to my name? The Tachnomite, his village, the name of his village was captured first. Adino, the Esnite. 
they attacked him, he fell on his pair. That was the only thing available. An artillery weapon, and he used it in close range and brought 800 armed men down. This one is, is known more to be a soldier than a disciple. And a day will come where the army with banners will ride. Nothing shall escape them. Ha! Ah, before them is like the Garden of Eden. And behind them, a flame burning. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses. And like horsemen, so shall they run. At the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains, like a people set in battle array. The final look of the end time church is not a look of disciples humble in school, it's a look of warriors, men aged on the battlefield. That when they cry, the devil knows today is a bad day. So awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. And Christ will give you light. It's time to march on the land with vigor. Let the fury that the enemy gave us, let him sense the same fury when we march in power. Because the least among us will be as strong as David. He lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew. How many times? There was no return march. He struck them once. May your spare be that spare that will bring down the giant of the territory and give peace into the hands of normal men. May your spare be that spare that will wound the witch until on her deathbed she can confess and say, I killed them. Oh, I killed them. I killed them. I killed them. I'm the one. I'm the one that did this. I committed this atrocity. I walked here. I brought evil there. I, I smote, but there was a spear. He struck me. I was high in my powers. I thought nothing could pin me down. Nothing could subdue me until the dark no night came. Okay. In all of that account, the feet of that spear, it entered me. Ah! You see, we are from the warrior clan. You might go and they will tell you that you have no business with people. God is a God of love. God doesn't cause religion. And you come back. If you come back, don't come back here. Because the next prayer point we lead, we contradict that position. We are a warrior clan. That's what we do. We cut things down. We, we penetrate realms. That's what we do. Have you read in your Bible that there's chastisement before peace? <laughs> so that's what we do. We secure the territory. So that, you know, when we came here, we didn't know we were doing something. Until that day when our studio got burned and the people in the place rose up to quench the fire. Some injured themselves. They say, this is the church came, we have been able to sleep. There were sorrow and torment of witchcraft. It was the prayers of the warrior clan that gave them liberty. So in the day when fire gulfed the building, they stood up to fight. But none of them told us that our prayers brought salvation until the day of calamity. <laughs> Your spear had, has done some wonders, some havoc. That has renovated the place and shaped it. So that righteousness can dwell in it. There is a valiant that must rise from among your people. Skilled in all the ways of righteousness. Wise in all the ways of the wisdom of Christ. Strong in all the ways of the power that is in the spirit. And he will wield a weapon that will bring salvation to his people. That's why the name of his village was remembered. He was, he was who? He was a technomite. Adino the S knight. May we read that book and see Joshua Osega. In the days of the peril and darkness had covered the whole land from, from Massy to Alede. In those days, there was a light. Oh my! 
then they will make sure the names of the herbalists that fell on this account. Weapons of war perished. I want my name to be in this roster. Verse 9. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo. Oh my. The Ahohite. One of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the, the sword. Oh, co, 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 co. Can you hear the sound of men coming down? Co, co. Co, co, co. Every time you hear that, co, one man has come down. Co, co, co. Three have come down. Co, co, co. Co, 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 co. That's the sound of tongues, tongues. Ba, co, co. Ke, ke, co. Ka, co, co, co. Co. I can hear it. It's, it's burning in my veins. I'm from the warrior clan, so this is what we do. His hand was weary, but there was a power that held it on to the soul. Will you back out just because you are weary? Not, 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 not the son of Dodo. The son of Dodo can be weary, but you cannot remove his hand from the soul. Who told you that your, your story ended when there's no mighty feet to your name? Dust your sandals. Dust. There's journey yonder. Rise and eat, for thy journey is yet far. I refuse to be defeated by the definitions of the, the defeat among humans. I will rise until my masculinity clothes me. I will rise. His hand cleave to the sun. For some of you, in order for redemption and salvation to come to your family, a man's hand must cleave to the sun. Cleave! To the sun. Cleave to the sun. You may not feel what I'm saying. It's not vibrating yet because you have not seen the darkness. It takes a great light to turn it back. In those days, even death itself, seeing the brilliance of the light, we turn backward. Can you pray in your heart as we still read the chronicle that no form of defeat, no form of despair, no form of depression will ever weigh you down such that you look back on God and backpedal. But your hand will be as strong as your will. Cleave to the soul. Cleave to the soul. Cleave to the soul. And I mean it with banners like the morning, like the noon, they will rise with intensity, with vibrance, with power, with might. Nothing can deny them access. No army, no skill, no weapon of war can turn them back. No number. Men whose hands are clean. Cleave to the soul. Covenant in a honeymoon. Covenant a halebokoria masika. Mirasoke bahande. Men that will go beyond the limits of weariness, the limits of infirmity, and find that in the spirit there is an answer to the infirmity of men. For the spirit himself, he helped how I found it is beyond weariness that is a strength beyond beyond the failing of human strength there is a power his hands cleave to the soul are you such a man that can fight when everybody is discouraged the army had run back because when the Philistines appeared they were armed to the teeth they were armed with even seeing that their sin was protected their chest was protected the, 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 the head was protected. And Israel had only sword and spear for the day. 
the rest dies run away the enemy had bulletproof but not the son of dodo he fought until his hand was weary and he cleaved to the soul may it be that in the chronicle solomon uka so in a time where people fled from the face of ministry he stood against hope he hoped <laughs> the chronicles will be read in the heavenlies may the congregation shout for joy when your own paragraph pops up these were the days of fear then arose donatus of Kwandi. you know they mentioned their village uka of where is one local government again Unkum. A light of Unkum began to glow. And the light gained intensity from one level of glory to the other until darkness was overcovered. Such were the testimonies of the variance of God. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. That means many garrisons. Where a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. And slew the Philistines. And the Lord brought a great victory. Is there a ground? Is there a family that is kept under your watch? A people under your battle cry? And the bargain is this. Will you allow the territory to the devil? Or you will stand to defend it? Shammah will never let go. Any ground to darkness. He would rather die with honor. Such was the fate of the vengeance. That one man could bring down a troop. One man could slay an army. These were not giants like Samson. They were normal men with the strength of their God. Such are you. For the Bible says, In the noonday, the army with banners shall arise, and nothing shall be able to stand against it. Now we want to take the oath of office before we go. Rise up with your right hand on your chest. So that among us, men like Shammah can be found in the days to come. I want my name to be in that book. I may not ride a private jet. I may not have a duplex to my name. I may not be the richest man in my village. But that my name linger the chronicles of the valiant of God who will stand for God in our land you will you stand for your family or allow the devil overrun them spirit of confusion seeks to shape the destiny of everyone that comes from that community the reason why you found the light was not because you were the best or the most cautious. You were supposed to be a lamp on a lampstand, bringing so much light that darkness fades away. You can see an opportunity in it, or you see danger. Where disciples see danger, soldiers see an opportunity. Men like Shammah, the son of Adi. Elias are the son of Dodo, whose hand was cleaved. Who is then for God in our land? Fight the war on faith's battleground. 
lift up banner of Christ high, giving praise unto my King, who will stand for God in Sing what I'm saying. Who will stand for God in our land? Fight the war. Fight the war on faith battleground. On faith battleground. Lifting the banner of Christ high. Lift the banner of Christ high. Bringing victory to my King. Who will stand for God in the land? Now sing it. I will stand. That's your oath of office. I will, I will stand, stand for God, God in my land. When everybody says it is not popular to do so, I I'll be standing on faith, on faith battle battle ground. Ground. We'll be lifted. Bring in victory to my victory king. To my king. I will stand for God. For God in Sing my it with passion. Land. I will stand. I will stand for God. In my land. Give a hila da kante baboria mahasamala. Oh One more time from the depth of your being. I will stand. I will stand for God in my life. By the end of faith, I do ground in the banner of Christ. I bring in victory. I will stand for God.